I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. Moments ago at today's Senate Judiciary Committee hearing, Senator John Kennedy questions Attorney General Merrick Garland on crime and policing. The Louisiana Republican opens by questioning Garland on racism and policing, asking the pointed question, do you think most cops are racist? Following that line of questioning, the Senator, known for his viral Senate hearing moments, presses the Attorney General on rising crime and the contentious practice of stop and frisk. Let's listen in. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, General, for being here. Could you pull that mic closer to you, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Is that better? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, General, um, I think the Justice Department is losing. I think you're losing on crime. I think you're losing on drugs. I think you're losing on immigration. I think you're losing on uh, Chinese espionage. Um, let me start with crime. What percentage of cops in America do you think are bad cops? Very small percentage. Like how small? I, I don't. I don't have a number. I think the you know, well, most you're the, police you're the country's chief, one of the country's chief law enforcement officers, is yeah, it less than ten percent? Uh, yes. Um, uh, let me just be clear. We believe that most police officers follow the Constitution in their in their practices. Most police departments do. And all police officers, I believe, want to work in police departments uh, that follow constitutional policing requirements. Is it less than 5%? I, I don't have the numbers. I think it probably is. But I, again, I don't have any numbers for you. Okay. Do you think most cops are racist? No, I do not. Um, what percentage of cops do you think, in your judgment, I know you can't give me an exact figure, uh, do you think are racist? I'm sorry, I'm not um, resisting because I have a number in, that I can't give you. I just really, there, I don't have any way of making that uh, evaluation. What's your gut tell you? Less than 5%? One thing I've learned is to uh, not give answers from my gut. Right. Well, you think it's less than 5%? I don't know the answer. I'm sorry. I, okay. I, I, you don't know? I don't know, no. Okay. Um, why, why doesn't the Justice Department support stop, question, and frisk? I'm not sure what stop you you mean stop and frisk is that what you mean? You, uh, Some call yeah, it stop yeah. and frisk. Look, stop, Harry v. Ohio. Yeah, we. Uh, I don't know that the Justice Department has a position. These this is a state and local um, uh, role normally. Um, look, Do you think stop, it works? I'm sorry. Do you think stop question and frisk works? I think in some circumstances it can work, but of course it can be abused. Right. Yeah. Um, what, but why doesn't the Justice Department aggressively? encourage law enforcement officials to use that technique. It's been declared constitutional, as you know. Yeah, it, the Supreme Court has uh, affirmed the constitutionality of stop and frisk. That's in the Terry case. That's exactly right. But we don't do that. Uh, just, the federal government doesn't do patrolling. This is work for patrolling. I, I know you don't, but you're one of the country's chief law enforcement officials, maybe the chief, and what you say matters. Well, what, and what, suppose here's what I'm, I'm I'm asking. Let's take Chicago, where you haven't we haven't made any inroads in stopping the killing. I mean, Chicago is now the world's largest outdoor shooting range. Uh, we know that a lot of the shootings come from gangs. Why wouldn't you want to call the police chief and the mayor in Chicago and say, "Look, you know who these gang members are." when you have a reasonable suspicion under Terry v. Ohio, an objective standard, more than just a hunch, why don't you aggressively stop, question, and frisk these gang members? You'll get guns off the street, you'll get drugs off the street, and you'll get a lot of gang members off the street, and you'll stop people killing each other. Why won't you do that? Look, uh, the best way for the federal government to stop violent crime is to work at each local level and determine and let the, the state and locals determine what the best use of their own Judge, resources I'm sorry for interrupting is. you, but I'm trying to get some answers. You're, I'm sorry. Why, why won't you do that? Just tell me why you won't do because, that. Your because, opinion matters. Because there is no one solution fits all 
that the federal government can suggest to state and local law enforcement. We believe state and local law enforcement knows best as to what to do there. We provide well, it's not working. We provide our technical expertise. We put lots of resources into uh, joint task forces. We well, pick General, up. Is that, I know I've got to shut this down. I've only got 15 seconds. Is, is that why you're asking in the middle of a raging inflation for 7% more money, $2.63 billion to provide technical increase, or te te uh, technical advice? I mean, we're going backwards here on crime, General. You're the state's or the country's chief law enforcement officer. And you won't even answer my question about how you feel about stop, question, frisk. Why I should think, we it, I think it's a resource allocation issue for each local police department. I believe that the Justice Department does the best by putting the money that we're asking for is increase in law enforcement that can be assisting the but, state but, and local. But, General, is that way. what we're supposed to tell the mothers of those kids getting killed in Chicago? You don't understand. It's a resource allocation Issue. No, what you're supposed to tell the mothers in Chicago and what I told them when I was there was the Justice Department was there to provide all the resources that this subcommittee will give us to stop violent crime. But yet the you more won't, resources won't you can give us. Stop question and frisk. That is a question for the state and the local I'm sorry. For the state and the local law enforcement. I didn't go over as much as Manchin did, Madam Chairman. <laughs> That's not the standard by which we judge behavior. <laughs> Uh, Thank you, General. You're welcome. Now, Senator Van Hollen. 